if you have used accelerometers in your NVH measurement, how to deal with these vibration channels? Is the same like all these airborne channels? What kind of weighting should I use? Is this DBA or should I use something else? And how, if I have a mixed recording, so there's noise and vibration in one recording, how can I separate this? All of this will be explained in this tutorial. So if you follow this full tutorial, you can call yourself acoustic engineer. Okay, let's synchronize. Uh, I used a recording, it's called Rat Zero Unbalanced. Um, so you can download this file, this measurement by in the description box, there's a direct link, it's free, it's just up for you, so you can follow me step by step. step. The special thing on this recording is, as we look inside, it's unbalanced. I put some weight on my lawnmower so we have nice vibration channels, so it's better to understand what's going on here. If you open the measurements, you will see um, we have airborne channels and X, Y and Z recordings of our vib handle vibrations. Uh, I like to use this measurement, but not the airborne channels. So just X, Y and Z measurement data is going to my next step. Um, our analysis folder, until now, we don't need loudness. This is definitely only for airborne channels. And only in the start, you like to use FFT average. Um, since we only use one recording, we don't need any statistic package. So we just take this off here and view in a data viewer. And that's what we see. This is X, Y and Z direction. So in X, we have the highest level, 3.37. Oh, this A calls, it's also in here, tells us we have A weighting still on. But is it right to use A weighting on vibration channels? Let's remind ourselves what A weighting is about. Well, if I'm speaking to you straight, everything is fine. But if I'm speaking through a tube, to directly here, there's a big difference in the noise, what you hear. Well, you think uh, the lawnmower doesn't speak through a tube. No, but the effect is the same if I'm speaking through a tube or if I'm listening to a tube. Some frequency can pass, they will be amplified by the tube, and other frequency will drop down, okay? And that's what you do, all the people do all the time, because our microphone is inside of the head, and there's an ear channel, and all the noise we hear has to pass that channel. And this has a big influence. And there are more effects. Um, the inner and the middle ear, <laughs> this construction is perfectly designed for a special frequency range. So lower frequency and higher frequency are also dropping. So you need higher level to hear the same loudness. So what you hear right now is not the voice I'm producing. You hear something strange effect on my voice because you're using your normal ears. And this is a problem we have if you use microphone measurements. They are linear, they're perfectly low, middle, high frequency, everything is correct like it's in the air. But it doesn't match to our perception. So the first step is to compensate the errors of our human ear is to use an A weighting. It reduces lower and the higher frequency and also an amplification at about two kilohertz. As you hear that, you understand A weighting has something to do just with the human hearing. It's an effect we need to compensate. If you're talking about vibrations, that's something we feel with the hands, it's a completely different kind of effect, different kind of weighting needed. It makes sense sometimes to use A weighting also on vibration channels. If I have a special noise, which is annoying, and I know it's coming from that machine, then I might want to know where this noise is in my structure, okay? So I can directly compare the frequency I hear with the frequency in my body and see where the problem zones, okay? But if I'm talking about the vibration that is annoying me in my steering wheel, in my seat, then you should use another kind of weighting. Let's see what we got. So FFT average can have spectral weighting A, B, C, ooh, <laughs> there's a lot. Okay, uh, I don't know what to choose. Um, maybe I can ask myself, but I don't get any answer. Ask your colleague. Well, it's a little bit embarrassing asking what weighting I should use. So if you're in trouble and you don't know who to ask, just press F1 key. This is the online help, which directly jumps to the point where you're stuck, okay? Um, so right now you're asking about spectral weighting. Yes, the basics, please. Just click on it and get a nice and decent explanation. So this is the A weighting. That's what we know. Mid maximum two kilohertz, lower and high frequency will drop, but that is just for error noise. Equal loudness, not out. Ah, here, vibration channel. So, spectral curve vibration along whole body sitting, standing or lying down. This 
if you're driving a car and you get this here, okay, it's sensitive. Uh, but we are looking something for the hand. Yeah, yeah, spectral weighting curve, vibration acting hand and arm. It's called WH, like hand. Uh, what is it does? Um, I need a picture. Ah, oh, there we are. Well, it looks similar to what we see before. Um, there's a maximum, low and high frequency dropping, but <laughs> the maximum is here. 10 hertz, not two kilohertz. It's, it's a massive difference. Uh, you can't skip this, okay? So WH is the proper weighting for our vibration signals. So we go back to our pool project. I like to keep this because this is good for everyone net channel. So I just take the full folder, press my magic control key to make a copy. And here I can make changes to my analysis. The FFT should use WH that we have learned right now. And also level versus time should use WH weighting for vibrations. Okay, same recording. We take this off, only this one we calculate it and go. And that is a different message. Before we saw 300 Hertz X is the biggest problem. And now we see, no, 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 the vibration that you feel is in Y direction at 50 Hertz and also in Z direction at 50 Hertz unbalanced. Yeah? Um, so this is a completely different information. The 300 Hertz noise we've seen so clear is irrelevant. You can't feel it, okay? So take this waiting. If you want to see these two results side by side in Artemis, as a number in front, you can change the number by pressing control key and give it maybe another number. So now both have three. At the same number, it's one group. Right mouse click and say, I want to have it left to right, so arrange it horizontally. And then we got it side by side, okay, one way. But if you want to have both curves in the same diagram for direct comparison, um, you can go to for recent results and say, the last thing I've calculated, this was the data view two, that was with the WH function. And um, there it is. And I like to use maybe just the Y direction and drag drop it to my data view of one uh, in here. Now we have two curves in there. I can magnify it. I can even say maximize. And you see this is completely different information here. Eh? 50 Hertz is the problem and not 300 Hertz. Okay, this is the effect of the weighting. But if I have noise and vibration, my recording like here, and I want to analyze it, it seems to be complicated because first I analyze maybe the accelerometer signals with these analysis. Maybe I call this vibration, even a name so I can remind myself even tomorrow. <laughs> and, and this will be um, noise analysis. Yeah. Um, so I, what I have to do is click first here with the vibration channel, calculate, and then I have to switch over to all these airborne channels in here. And I have to calculate this one here and then merge it later on. This is a lot of clicking, so it doesn't feel good. And there are, of course, options to make this automatic. The easiest way still in the pool project is use the filter pool. This is the fifth column of a pool project. And this is here between the time data of your recordings and the analysis, so you can adapt your recordings before it goes to the analysis. Um, let's see what we can do here is insert. There's a lot and insert here a frequency weighting. Okay, so now we can even do this before it goes to the analysis. And if you check the properties for this, of course, we can say spectral weighting, but not for all channels, only for all airborne channels. So this is an automatically detection. And if I copy this control, Another one, I can say this one will use WH weighting, but only on all vibration channels. Huh. <laughs> okay, here we need a third one. This will be all, and we don't give any weighting in here, in none, because we have already done the weighting before. One more important thing, that's why I show it to you. If I calculate this way and have all the channels on, what will happen is, all the five channels goes here, the air one channel will be weighted, the other not, and then pass over it. And the same goes in here and we pass over. So what you get, you double the numbers of channels because this is spread out to be calculated and this is spread out to be calculated. We want to change the order here. It's good to be first check for frequency weighting A, air one channels, and then go one step further and then pass over to the analysis column, okay? Uh, so what we do here is insert a package. 
It's a really professional tool now here, okay? Insert a serial package one step after each other. And then we just drag drop our analysis in here and activate this one. So the channels get in here, vibration channels get the WH weighting, airborne channels the A weighting. And these prepare signals will then jump into the next pool for the analysis. Let's see. Wow, a lot of data. We see the two analysis, level versus time on the left, FFT average on the right, here are the airborne channels, and here are the vibration channels. So of course you can say a one page for each channel unit. Okay, so we have first on first page, we have airborne, and here are the vibration channels. Okay, there's only one more thing to learn. I don't want to see X, Y, and Z separated. I want to make use of using a triax accelerometer. But how to make this? How can I see the face? Or how can I display the motion? Okay, and another thing is, if I want to summarize it, do I use the max value? Or I mean, this is a vector. How can I organize this to be just one number for this full point? People fail on that. I've seen it a lot of time. It's easy to make an error on that point, okay? Please check the last seventh video and you are faultless in that point. So, see you. Thank you.